Hi everybody, welcome to a new machine learning from scratch tutorial. Today we are going to implement a perceptron using only built-in Python modules and NumPy. The perceptron can be seen as one single unit of an artificial neural network. So the perceptron is a simplified model of a biological neuron and it simulates the behavior of only one cell. So let's have a look at this image. Here we have one cell and our cell gets an input, so it gets input signals and they are weighted and summed up. And if the whole input signal then reaches a certain threshold, our cell fires a signal and delivers an output. So in our case it either fires a 1 or a 0. And now if we model this mathematically, then it looks like this. So we have our input features and they are multiplied with some weights and then summed up. And then we apply an activation function and get our output class. So this is the model and now the linear part, the linear model simply looks like this. So this is just a linear function w transpose times x plus b. So here we multiply and sum up our weights and the bias. So the bias is the w0 here in this picture. And after this linear model we apply the activation function and in the simplest case we simply use the so-called unit step function and this is defined as it's either 1 if our input reaches a certain, a certain threshold or zero otherwise. So in this picture the threshold is zero. So if the input is larger than zero then the output is one and otherwise it's zero. And now this is all we need to model the output and now the whole output is looks like this. So first we apply the linear function and then we apply the actuation function. And now we have to come up with the weights and the bias and for this we use a simple update rule that is called the perceptron rule. So we look at each training sample xi and for each training sample we then apply the update step and this is defined as the new weight is the old weight plus the delta weight and the delta weight or delta w is defined as alpha times the actual label minus the predicted label times the training sample x. And here alpha is a learning rate between 0 and 1. So this is just a scaling factor. And now let's have a look at what this update rule means. So let's have a look at the four possible cases in a two-class problem. So our output can be 1, the actual label can be 1 and the predicted label is also 1, then the difference is 0, so we have no change for our weights here. And the same is if the actual class is 0 and the predicted class is also 0. So correctly classified then the difference is 0 and again no change for our weights. But now what happens if we have a misclassification? So if the actual class is 1 and the predicted class is 0, this means that our weights are too low and then we see that the difference is 1 so our weights are increased here and if the actual class is 0 and the predicted class is 1 then our weights are too high and we see that the difference is minus 1 so then our weights are decreased. So the weights are pushed towards the positive or negative class in case of a misclassification. And this is a simple and intuitive rule, but it works. And this is all we need. So we look at each training sample and then apply the update rule. And then we do this a couple of times. So we iterate for a certain number of iterations. And then we have the final weights and are done. 
So this is all we need to know and now we can get started and implement it. So first of all, of course we use NumPy. So we import NumPy as NP and then we create a class and call it Perceptron. Perceptron and it gets an init method of course and here it has self and it gets the learning rate and I will give this a default of 0 0.01 then it gets a number of iterations so n iters and I will also give this a default let's say 1000 then I will simply store them so I will say self.lr equals learning rate and self.n iters equals n iters then we create a deactivation function so let's say self dot activation func equals and now let's create this here and as I said the activation function is simply the unit step function so let's call this unit step func with self and an input x and we could simply say return one if x is larger or equal than zero and else return zero but uh, we see later that we this would only work for one single sample but we see later that we want to apply the activation function in the predict method for all the test samples so we want to apply this for a nd array as well and for this we can use a simple function that is called numpy.where so we return numpy.where and this will get a condition so x is larger or equal than zero and if the condition is true then we return one and otherwise zero so this will work for one single sample but also for multiple samples in one vector so now this is our activation function so now we can say self dot activation func equals self dot unit step func and now let's also create the weights say self dot weights equals none so, and self dot bias equals none so now that we know that we have to implement them or get them and now we um, implement two functions as always we implement the fit and the predict method so first define the fit method with x and y so this gets the training samples and the training labels and then of course oh I forgot the self and then we also define the predict method which gets self and then the test samples and now we start um, with this predict method because this is very simple um, let's have a look at the approximation of our output again so here first we apply this linear function and then the activation function so let's do this so first the linear function so let's say linear output equals and this is w transpose times x plus the bias and w transpose times x is nothing else but the dot product so we can use numpy dot of x and self dot self dot weights plus self dot bias so now we have the linear function and now we apply the activation function so we say y predicted equals self dot function 
and as an input it gets the linear output here and then we simply return the y predicted. So this is the whole predict method and now let's jump to the fit method. So first of all let's get the dimensions of the x vector. So this is an nd array of size m times n where m or the number of rows is the number of samples and n or the number of columns is the number of features. So we say n samples and n features equals x dot shape and now we init our weight so we have to give them an initial value and we can simply set them to zero in the beginning so we say self dot weights equals numpy dot zeros of size number of features so for each feature we put a zero here for our weight and also our self dot bias this is simply zero and now we can start or one more thing we have to do is we want to make sure that our y only consists of classes 0 and 1. So let's say y underscore equals and now let's convert all the values to 0 or 1 if this is not already the case. So we use list comprehension for this. So we say 1 if i is larger than 0 else it's 0 for i in y and now let's convert this to a numpy array so now we have our y and now we can start the training so let's again have a look at this update rule so we want to look at each training sample and we also want to do this a couple of iterations. So we need two for loops here. So let's say the first one for underscore because we don't need this in range self dot n iters. So this is the number of iterations we defined. And then our second loop and for this I used the enumerate method so I can say for index and also x y in enumerate x so I want to iterate over the training um, training samples and the enumerate function will give me the index and then also the current sample. So these are our two loops and now <clears throat> sorry let's apply um, this update rule. So let's again we have to calculate the predicted value and then apply the update. So let's say the linear output equals numpy dot of the current sample and our self dot weights plus the self dot bias. Then we apply the activation function and get the predicted value. So y predicted equals self dot activation function of the linear output. So here we can see that in this case we use it for only one sample. And here down in the predict method we use the activation function for multiple samples and that's why we need this numpy where function here in our activation function. So yeah and now let's continue. So now we have our predicted y and now let's have a look at the formula again. So we have the learning rate times the difference and then times x. So let's call this update equals self dot learning rate times and here we have the actual label so y underscore of this current index 
minus y predicted and then we say self dot weights plus equals update times xi and self dot bias plus equals update times one so we don't need this times one and now we are done so this is the whole implementation of the perceptron and now let's test this so here i've written i've already written a little test script here so i import the perceptron here and then i will create two two blobs so i can use this from the sk learn module i can use a function that is called make blobs so this will create two classes and then I will split our data into training samples and test samples and training, uh, training labels and test labels. Then I will create a perceptron. I will fit the training data and then I will predict the test labels. And then I will calculate the accuracy and I will also plot this. So let's run this. And I hope I didn't forget anything. So now here is the plot. So here we see our two blobs. And here we have our linear decision boundary. So this is the decision function that our perceptron generated. And we see that it separates our two classes perfect here. So and we also see that our accuracy is one so it's perfect in this case and yeah we see that the perceptron works and one thing that we should be aware of is that the perceptron only works for linearly separable classes so if classes can be separated with a linear function like here in our case uh, let's have a look at this again then it works very well but otherwise not so much and for further improvements, we can try out different activation functions, for example, the sigmoid function, and then apply a gradient descent method rather than the perception rule in order to update our weights. But yeah, for now, that should be all I wanted to show you. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you next time. Bye.